All right, it's our final segment this morning with Republican strategist Steve Gill talking about the future of DACA. And by the way, you know, in addition to, to working on campaigns, you used to have a radio show. You've got a, a website now, a conservative news, I guess. TennesseeStar.com. TennesseeStar.com. Go check it out. We uh, launched in February, and we're at about 2.7 million visits um, in the seven months since Just we started. Just covering a variety of political news, basically? Is that Entertainment, politics, news, you know, basically from a Tennessee base. Ah, interesting. All right, something to put out there. That's what you're. You're always working on something. All right, let's let's go next to Bob. Bob, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Hi, I got Bob. a I got uh, three points I'd like to make. Okay. Um, one is uh, the anchor babies that are coming over here. It seems to me is probably a worse problem than what we've got down in the other situation where rich people send their children over here as anchor babies, and then they. Uh, come back, uh, they take them back to their country and then get free college education and stuff for them when they get 18, come back in here and then they can sponsor their parents to come. But also on the uh, Mexican situation, I don't see how that we can say to the Mexicans, on Reagan, wasn't it, that said, tear this wall down, Khrushchev, hmm. and when they was wanting a European Union, mm -hmm. I think Mexico should be a state of the United States <laughs> and take it and let the people vote and let them come across the border like it's a state. But if you really want to solve the problems, instead of sending the illegal Mexicans back when you catch them over here, why don't we send the people that hire them to Mexico mm -hmm. when they hire illegal aliens? Let's just deport the people that hire them. Yeah, you know, I remember back when the issue really came to a head years ago with Senator Frist. That was kind of his thing, wasn't it? I mean, talking about, you know, they're coming here because they're making money and they're taking it back and they want jobs. Let's go after the employers. I, I agree 100%. And I think that's one, one of the things that, again, has been really unfair about the system. We ought to punish those who come here illegally, work illegally, hide their um, process uh, here illegally through identity theft. But we also ought to be going after the employers who knowingly, in many cases, hire people illegally. That's why we need E-Verify, because the employers a lot of times can say, look, we get somebody, they give us a social security number, we have no way to know if it's you know Juan Gonzalez or whether it's some white middle-aged lady in Seattle. Give us an electronic verification system, then we make the employers check everybody, and then if you find somebody who's working there illegally, you ought to put, at, put the uh, employer in jail along with the illegal alien who's working there. Hmm. But you gotta have that electronic system to be able to check yeah. so, so you, you can, can hold the make employers the case. accountable. That's the way. Yeah. And that's, again, that's why I think the, the Democrats don't want the how much would How much would he verify, verify it's cost? Electronic. It would, I know, cost would, much would the all. employers pay for that? How would that work? Do you, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how that you, out. Would, you would fund that. The bottom line, though, is the Democrats don't want that because if you stop that flow, of, of people coming here to work illegally, then they lose all the potential Democrat voters that is really the focus of what they want. They got 800,000 dreamers that they want to give amnesty to so they can get green cards, citizenship, and vote, and most of them will vote Democrat. So they don't want to crack down on the employers, because if you crack down on the employers, you won't continue to have that flood of illegals coming in. You mentioned the evangelicals that, that are, are op opposed to President Trump's position. Mm -hmm. Most of the evangelicals that are being cited in this were part of the uh, 100 evangelicals pastors who wrote a letter condemning Donald Trump during the campaign. They were not for Trump before. You had a lot of evangelicals who were, but Russell Moore, for example, from, from Nashville, the, um, used to do the policy mm -hmm. for the Southern Baptist Convention. He was an avid anti-Trumper, and he's one of the leading evangelicals that they're saying is defending Donald Trump. Well, I bet there are some, too, on Trump's panel that have that, come out and that said that... have some that, compassion yeah. for these folks, well, that's but what even is. they say that's we ought is. to deal with the illegal activity. Okay. Let's go to Reverend uh, Fuzz. Reverend Ian Fuzz, good morning. Hey, hey, Nick and uh, Steve, good morning. Hey, Steve. Reverend, how are you? I, I, you know, this has been going on a real, real, real long time. <laughs> this is not a new issue. How do you think and why do we think that people are going to fix this in the next six months? And who started this in the first place? Why would we expect, especially African Americans, to be against DACA? or against immigration when the, the thought is that it started because uh, companies didn't want to pay people a decent wage and even right now there are some very wealthy people who benefit from this and it appears to me to be a distraction 
from other issues that are out there. Uh, 800,000 people, that's not a huge number of folk in America uh, when we're talking about 800 million. And then when we, most times I hear Republicans Besides, quote scriptures a lot of times when they're against something. And on this issue here, where are the scriptures being used this time? Um, if you would look in scriptures, you would find that you're supposed to welcome and help these little children, I would think. But again, I've been following this since 88, I remember, mm -hmm. and wondered how did this start in the first place? And the best point I've heard, people are hiring folk who come here because they don't want to pay people a decent wage. And I just wonder, how do, isn't this a distraction? We're not going to fix this in six months. Okay. That's All right. my question. All All right. Right. Yeah, six months. Well, not you can fix this part. And I think, uh, again, uh, if you're, you know, mm. one of the millions of Americans who are out of work and looking for work, uh, 700,000 jobs that suddenly become available uh, if the DACA folks are not taking the jobs that you could have, if you're getting a higher paycheck. I think you're exactly mm -hmm. right, Reverend Fuzz. This is being used to suppress income. African Americans are going to be some of the biggest beneficiaries if we deal with the illegal immigration and the jobs that they are taking. So uh, I, I think we go after the employers that are hiring illegally. I think it raises wages. And I think most importantly, it establishes that the rule of law matters that we're not going to continue to ignore it just because you've got strong political advocacy groups. Let's go to Mark. Mark, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Mark. I, I really appreciate what Reverend Fuzz had to say to a point, but I'd like, I'd like to bring up two things. Number one, you all are ignoring the fact that these 800,000 kids have been in this country for an extended period of time. Undoubtedly, their parents are not running this through the streets, looting and pillaging the country. They have been in this country uh, pr uh, providing for their children. They're members of our society. They're not on the dole. And I think it's unfair that um, they try to make everybody sound like they've snuck into the country just to, you know, rape and pillage. That is so unfair. I just I can't believe it. And uh, Reverend Foss was saying that uh, he remembers when this started. It started because of NAFTA. All the uh, uh, businesses uh, left the country. A lot of them went to Mexico. Mexicans couldn't find work in Mexico anymore. And that's when the big flood started. Everybody wants to keep talking about them being illegal, illegal, uh, they're in the country illegal, correct. But they're not criminals. All right, Steve? Well, a couple of things that are, that are just wrong. Um, NAFTA didn't start the flood. You had floods of illegals that were coming in. Again, we've talked about the amnesty that Reagan did during his years. Uh, moving American jobs to Mexico in part through NAFTA was intended to keep Mexicans there rather than coming into the country. NAFTA didn't increase the number of, of jobs uh, that uh, illegals started taking in the United States. It was intended in part to help provide some economic development in Mexico that would help Mexico thrive economically and keep Mexicans at home and stop illegally coming into the country. So that's just factually inaccurate. I, I think the, the bigger point is you've got people who are again illegally entering the country. They are not all on the dole, but you had uh, Barack Obama's aunt Zutini, who was actually living in public housing uh, up in the Boston area, even though it is supposedly illegal for illegals to be getting public housing, to be getting welfare, to getting all the other benefits that American taxpayers pay for, and yet they are on the dole, contrary to what you may expect. I don't think everybody's trying to portray that all the dreamers are coming in and raping and pillaging and plundering, but they're also all not engineers, scientists, and medical doctors the way that you're seeing trotted out to appeal uh, emotionally to Americans to try and misrepresent who the DACA dreamers are. The majority of them don't even have a high school degree. The average age of these dreamers are not young children. The average age is about 23 to 24 uh, and extends up to age 32 to 34. So the idea that there's somehow a bunch of little children that we're trying to kick out of the country is not accurate. And again, that's where we ought to have a debate based on facts, 
and truth, not the kind of propaganda and the emotional appeals that the, that the DACA advocates seem to only be able to rely on or inaccurate information. Let's go to Willie. Willie, good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good, Willie. Go ahead. Hey, I, you know, I'm kind of confused about this. You hear a lot of stuff about the bad people and stuff, and mostly from um, Mexico. What about all these other places that illegals are coming from? Okay. I've been to California, I've been south, I've been north, and a lot of these, I ain't going to say these, I'm trying not to be like some people, but a lot of people that come to the country are working jobs that most Americans won't work. I have worked in jobs where, I, you know, they're not going to pay good wages, that's why I guess they hire people from other countries. Okay, you know, and you, I had to cut him off because we're getting close to it, but he brings up some points. You know, yes, a lot of people are hiring illegal. To the, the, the migrant workers, it things does, like that. It does suppress the but, wages because it's, it's cheaper to hire an illegal, which is, again, why we've got to go after the employers in addition to those who are legally working here. The reason this keeps happening is because employers like the low wage. That's why the Chamber of Commerce and all these mm -hmm. other groups are siding in and, and advocating for it. Okay, and the, the bottom line on this, too, though, uh, six months as we just wrap things up we only have about three minutes left do you think it's realistic steve in your mind six months to maybe come up with a comprehensive immigration solution with the way things are going right now in dc i, I don't i don't think you get everything resolved in terms of, of immigration again it's been being tried for a long time but i do think that the eight hundred thousand daca dreamers i i think that there is a potential trade-off of we're going to continue the daca program we're going to continue to vet people who were brought here uh below age 18 and who have grown up here in many cases just for a few years in many cases their whole life but you trade that for a wall uh, and actual border security which as as the caller pointed out it's not just Mexicans. We don't know who's coming across the border right now because we're not securing it. And in an age of terrorism, when weapons and bio weapons and others can come across our open borders, it's a national security issue, not just yeah. an employment issue. But the wall thing, obviously Congress, and it's the price tag. I mean, part of Trump's campaign was he was going to have Mexico pay for it. What happened to that? Uh, we'd be able to get Mexico to do it with an executive <laughs> order. All President <laughs> Trump has to do is say, we're going to start enforcing our border law, and every vehicle that comes across the border from Mexico, we're going to inspect from front by bumper to back bumper, you'd have a 50 mile line coming in from Mexico, goods would spoil, products would uh, would go bad before they got here. In about two weeks of that, Mexico would say, let us pay for the well, wall. Well, maybe, but the people waiting for those products here are going to be pretty upset. Uh, again, they would blink first. You think they would blink first? Do you think we, there's still a way to do get that Mexico avocados to pay for, it? for a couple of weeks? Oh, I don't know. I love my guacamole. <laughs> yeah, it's just, we'll do it during the non-avocado uh, season. But your thinking is, if, if Congress comes back for whatever reason, just for something addressing DACA, Dreamers, it won't go anywhere. the president won't sign it. But if it comes back, maybe with something addressing e the verify, or e verify well, or something, even if it's not comprehensive, that can be done. he likely would sign it. And then. again, if people who really care and claim they care about these DACA <coughs> Dreamers, if they really care about them, then they'd be willing to cut a deal to take care of them, hmm. which would mean border security, which everybody should be for, hmm. e verify to make sure that these folks are not being taken advantage of. How would you oppose that if you really care about these Dreamers? and if you want to fix the problem, that's a pretty reasonable trade-off if you're not just playing politics with it. I think that those on the DACA advocacy side are more interested in playing politics, having protests and pitching tantrums than actually doing something right. that would solve it. Yeah, and you said in six months, you know, we're going to be getting close to elections. We primaries, primaries at that general, point. And this is going to be political one way or the other, as you well know. And it was in the last election. I think that's, yeah. again, Donald Trump won on this yeah. issue. Yeah. Why would he trade off hurting when his you base you me when years it's a from now about Donald Trump and what his siren call was when he began? Build the wall. Build wall. That was it, and it got and him her up. And he's not going to get that yeah. done. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. It's always Thanks good seeing you. We'll see you again as Thank we talk you. about this we'll morning. Take a break. Programming note right after this. This week on Fishing Affliction TV. Okay, here's our six bass from Kentucky Lake today. Join the guys for a whole bunch of fishing fun and the conclusion of Doing the Two Tap with Slam and Sam Lashley on Kentucky Lake. Major cold front coming on, and why are you doing that? But anyway, <laughs> we've all had a good time. Your Fish and Affliction TV weekend begins Saturdays at 5 p.m. right here on News Channel 5 Plus, your home for Fish and Affliction. 
Final notice. Rivergate Toyota is closing its doors forever. Final chance to buy Toyotas with last call pricing. Rivergate Toyota is closing its doors forever. We're closing, and that means everything priced to sell. Camrys, final notice. Tundras, last call. Corollas, don't miss out. Final notice before Rivergate Toyota closes its doors forever. North Gallatin Road off 386. RivergateToyota.com. I'm telling you, I cannot wait for the premiere of our new show, Pickler and Ben. Me too. It's got absolutely everything you could possibly want. What matters to you matters to us. Cooking, you got design, life hacks. She'll sing at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> it's all about living the good life. <laughs> and we're making dreams come true for everyday folks. Trust me, endless surprises are coming your way. And we're coming from one of the hottest cities in America, Nashville, Tennessee, baby. So y'all come hang with us. Y'all. Pickler and Ben premieres September 18th at 9 a.m. on News Channel 5. shelterpetproject.org. All right, that is a wrap. Uh, apologize if we didn't get to all your phone calls. We had a lot of phone calls this morning. I just want to be clear, too, if you just tuned in today and missed yesterday and you're wondering, well, why do you have Steve Gill on there? He's, he's supporting, you know, the rescinding of DACA. Well, the idea was that we had guests on yesterday, Elliot Osmond and others, to talk about why they were disappointed in the president's decision. Today, we did the other side. So we wanted to cover both. Sometimes it's better to go that way as opposed to having them all on set at the same time for one show when it becomes a heated debate at times, even though, uh, you know, Steve and the others, I think, uh, they would have behaved. But uh, we were able to cover more ground that way. Listen, folks, everything shifts, barring any last-second change, a plea deal or delay. We will start our gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the Holly Bobo murder trial on Monday. You join us for that. Me and News Channel 5 legal analyst Nick Leonardo. Follow me on Facebook. Good day, everyone. Your life is full of responsibilities.